Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today I'm bringing you a guide on how to do farming runs and get the most from them. Farming runs are a great way to net yourself some daily or even hourly GP for very low effort. They're reliable, passive, and surprisingly quick once you get into a routine. My average return is anywhere from 2.5 to 3 mil profit for about 7 to 10 minutes of my time. In this guide, I'll be going over what I do for my farming runs, go over some recommendations, and even give you some lower entry level suggestions since my route has a mix of low end to high end requirements. If you'd like to skip ahead to a specific point in the video, you can follow the timestamps on the screen or click them in the video description. Let's get to it. Going into the recommendations, I want to mention that the list here is vast, but do not get discouraged by not having all or any of the items below. You can still net yourself a great profit with very minimal entry. The following items are Ultra Compost or Super Compost, the Green Fingers Aura, a Juju Farming Potion, the Master Farmer's Outfit, Magic Secateurs, Scroll of Life, Modified Farmer's Hat, Ectophile, Modified Botanist Mask, Explorer's Ring 4, Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed, Taranwin Quiver, Wilderness Sword 1 or higher, an offhand melee weapon only if you're using Bladed Dive, and the Farming Cape. Other recommendations would be the Lumberge and Drainer Hard Diary for the Explorer's Ring, the Ardoin Medium Plus Diary for the Manor Farmed Allotment Teleport, and that increases to unlimited teleports if you complete the Elite Diary, the Wilderness Easy Plus Diary, which gives you a teleport to the Wilderness Herb Patch for Blood Weeds, and that becomes disease free after completing the Hard Diary. My Arms Big Adventure gives you the disease free Trollheim Herb Patch. And if you complete Lunar Diplomacy and gain 370,000 produce points from Livid Farm, you unlock the Trollheim Patch Teleport at 92 Magic. The Manor Farm Tutorial Completion, this gives you a chance of finding Zygomites from Mushroom Patches, and this is already completed if you have the Master Farm Outfit. The Lodestone Network, this is just great for everything because it gives you free teleports to nearly all patches. Plague's End, this gives you the Cruis Herb Patch and the ability to make the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed. Jack of Spades Quest gives you access to the Menaphos Cactus Patch. Fairy Tale Part 1 gives you access to the Magic Secatures. Fairy Tale Part 2, which gives you access to the Fairy Rings. Priest in Peril gives you access to the Mauritania Farming Patch. And Ghost Ahoy for the Ectophile if you don't have the Modified Botanist Mask. As you can see here, there are a vast list of items, quest unlocks, diaries, and various tasks that all influence a good farming run. Don't get discouraged by not having everything in this list. I'm missing a few of these things myself, and some of these items I've only recently obtained. I've been doing farm runs for years and have gradually built on them over time to optimize the GP I earn in the smallest amount of time possible. My route contains the following. 6 normal herb patches and 1 bloodweed patch, 4 flower patches, 6 fruit tree patches, 2 mushroom patches, and 2 cactus patches. My preset includes the master farmer's outfit, the modified farming mask which is included in the master farmer's outfit once it's unlocked, magic secateurs on the tool belt, farming cape, wilderness sword 4, enhanced excalibur for the bladed dive, modified botanist mask, explorer's ring 4, grace of the elves on luck of the dwarves which are not required, portable fairy ring, spirit tree rerouter, attuned crystal teleport seed, terrain run quiver 4, and my inventory consists of 6 herb seeds of choice, 1 bloodweed herb seed, 2 marshella mushroom spores, 4 marigold seeds, an ent familiar pouch, 1 dose of juju farming potion, and a trollheim teleport. I always start off my runs at the trollheim patch since it takes the longest to get there and I don't have the lunar teleport unlocked. This is to get the full use of my Juju Farming Potion dose. Once there, I then withdraw 8 Ultra Compost, activate my Aura, and summon my Ent Familiar. The Ent doesn't actually help with the herbs, but it helps with the fruit trees and bushes if you run those. The duration of the Ent will last longer than the farm run, so I use it to free up the inventory space. After I gather, I note my herbs by using them on the Tool Leprechaun, teleport to the next location, then rinse and repeat with the following patches. The root of the herb patches doesn't matter so much as long as I finish in Catherby. I do that so I can run straight from the herb patch all the way to the fruit patch which saves me a second teleport to Catherby. I'll put a list on the screen now of all the teleports that I use to get to each individual herb patch so you can go ahead and look at this list and adjust your route accordingly. After Catherby, I teleport to all my fruit tree patches and mushroom patches. Once again, the order of the teleports doesn't really matter. Mushroom and fruit tree patches allow you to tick gather, which means that it'll gather the resource the second you click on it. I do this on both patch types to save a small bit of time. Lastly, I finish up with the cactus patches and Alcarid and Menophos. I skip Anachronia because I don't have the totem near that patch finished. And as you can see here, all of this nets me anywhere between 2.5 to 3 mil. So, how do you get started? If farming runs are new for you, then this all probably seems obscenely complicated. And I'd agree with you. I always recommend taking things at a digestible rate and building from there. If this is something you'd like to get into, here's a path that I personally recommend. First thing you should start off with is unlocking the Lodestone Network. 
This is just a great idea for anything in RuneScape. It permanently gives you access to various areas in the game for low effort and for free. After that, start with your herb and allotment runs. The easiest allotments to access straight away are Falador, Catherby, and Ardoin. Mauritania is a quick unlock as well since Priest in Peril is a low requirement quest. This gives you access to 4 allotments. And the last thing is just to run these allotments until you can handle more. Herbs are probably the bread and butter of most farming runs when it comes to GP, and just these 4 allotments can net you a great profit, especially at lower levels. Going all the way down to Morentals, they only take 14 farming to grow, seeds cost about 500 GP, and each herb sells for over 7k a piece. That's major profit. Marigolds are only level 2, and seeds are currently about 550 GP, and the marigold flowers are 10k each. And at higher farming levels, you get more marigolds per harvest. For these runs, make sure to buy and make your own super compost as well. It's very cheap, and it's the second best compost to use for increasing the yield from your crops. Assuming your crops are alive, super compost makes it so you gain a minimum of 5 herbs per seed, and that only increases if you have some of the other boosts I mentioned earlier in this video. If it's a lot of information to process, like I said, I completely understand. Just take it one step at a time and build on it over time. The recommendations I've listed are highly worth going for as they either heavily increase your crop yield or heavily reduce your time investment. Both are great benefits, especially if this is something you plan to do every day or even hourly. And that's all I have for you today guys. Farming runs are probably my favorite activity in RuneScape in both RS3 and Old School RuneScape. They're leisurely, make good money, and there's just something about doing them while sipping on my first cup of coffee during the day. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to check out more daily money makers, then check out my dailies playlist. I'll be adding to this over time so there's no shortage of content to enjoy. Lastly, if you'd like to catch me live, I stream over on Twitch. Link is in the video description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Rayo, and I'll see you next time. Take care.